guys, welcome to another Heavy House tutorial. Today we're going to be making a procedural halftone shader in Cycles 4D. I have in my scene uh, my little dragon that is UV mapped and a plane that has been made editable so that I have the UV map on there as well. Okay, let's create an emission material, that way it's easy to see what we're doing. Apply those. So the first thing we want to do is create a circle. So add the texture coordinate node, add a gradient texture node, change the gradient texture from linear to spherical, pick your UV, pipe that in, and then the gradient texture into the emission. And that can be the factor or the color. We'll do the factor. Okay, so now we need to be able to control the scale of that pattern. So we're gonna add in the uniform scale node that I did in my last tutorial. Uh, you can go back and watch that. It's a pretty simple little node to build. Okay, let's just bring that scale down to let's say like 0.1. Okay, so then we've got a nice small one up in the corner there. Okay, now we need to tile this. So we're going to create a separate XYZ and a combine XYZ. Plug those in. Let's give ourselves a little room. Okay, and we're going to bring in a math node. And it's going to be set to modulo. I don't have a good definition for Modulo, but uh, from Cycles 4D ma manual, it says it is value one divided by value two and then returning the remainder. So if value one is four and value two is two, the output is zero because four is divided by two evenly and there's no remainder. But if value two is three, the result is one. Four divided by three leaves a remainder of one. So hope that makes sense. Uh, for me, it was just playing around to kind of get these results. Okay, so we're going to set the value to 2 on Modulo, and uh, you can command or control click and drag to duplicate nodes. So duplicate that node, and we're going to change this to subtract, change the bottom value to 1, hook those across for the X, and you now see we have a tile of X going in the X axis. So we're going to copy these and plug in Y. Now we have that sphere texture tiled across everything. So let's have, right now we have control over here at the pattern scale. So 0.3 scales it up, 0.1 you know, scales it down. You can go 0.01. So that's the pattern scale. So that's how far each of these center points are away from each other. So if we come over here and create another uniform scale, this will control the size of each of the circles. So the center point stays the same based off the pattern scale, but this changes the scale of those. Okay, and then Oops, that went really high. Set that back down to one. Okay, now we need to create an offset so that every other row of these is up and the other stays in place. So we're gonna do another separate XYZ and combine. Might need a little more room here for this one. Uh, plug those in across. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is a math node. Uh, y is going into value 1, x into uh, value 2, and then this into the y value. Okay, so we've got this little skew going on. Copy this math node, change it to round. Where's round? There's round. And we're going to round it to 1. So you're going to notice that it breaks some of those inner values. 
that were ca causing it to look skewed. So here you've got like a hard line. Okay. Now we are going to multiply this by 0.5. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do here, copy that and we're going to change this to add and we're just going to add one so now every other one is offset and exactly what we wanted uh, again here you have the pattern scale let's bring that down to uh, 0.05 let's make it something small that is a bug that i have reported and that is anytime you hit enter these stay selected and uh, you constantly change them when you are navigating hopefully that gets fixed in the next update of cycles 40 okay so in this uniform scale uh, you know we still have control over the size of each one of these dots let's bring this pattern scale down even lower let's go 0.01 there we go and now come over to our the one that controls the size of these dots and we're going to add in a layer weight and a color ramp plug the facing in and then let the facing control the scale of the dots so you can see here Anything that's facing the camera directly is black, so it is giving a scale of almost zero. And then uh, anything around the edges is giving a scale of one. Gives you kind of a neat little look. Um, another thing that you can do is, after the gradient texture, throw another color ramp. Let's set this to step, and now you have, let's zoom in on this, these dots no longer have a gradient to them, but as you can see, this works based off of the camera angle, and gives you kind of a neat look. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this. Uh, if you want to go over to my Gumroad page, I am releasing a paid texture for halftone, uh, quite a bit more extensive than what we just built. And let's see what that looks like. So, all this is built into a single node with a lot of different controls. Uh, we should probably keep this texture coordinate, bring it over. Okay, so let's see what some of these things do. Let's take our UV, go into the vector, and then our halftone dots as our output. I'm going to cut that into the color. So now here's the halftone dots. Um, in here you've got object color, and this is just going to change your, your dots. Obviously you can put a color ramp at the end if you wanted to, to do this, but this just allows you to do it right from here. Um, let's go back to black and white. Okay, so you've got an object scale slider. This will change the scale of the dots. You've got a pattern scale, same as our the one that we built. Okay, and then it also has an X and Y aspect control. So here I'm linking those and here kind of squashing them in the Y. Uh, there's a control to turn the gradient on. Uh, on is one and off is at zero. In between, I'm sure you could come up with something cool to do with this, but it's really just meant to be zero or one. And then, or you can turn on the outline, and that's the same thing, off or on. With the outline, let's, um, let's bump up the object scale a little bit. And then we have an outline width here that you have control over. Uh, this, the gradient, uh, it gets overridden by the outlines. I do not have that figured out yet, but possibly in version two. There's a few things that I want to release in the second version of this, or version 1.1 or whatever. But uh, yeah, this outline width is pretty.
pretty fun to play with. So that's just the halftone dots. We also have random dots. So this pattern scale, let's turn off all of these so we can see it. Let's increase the pattern scale and then turn pull down the object scale. So now we have uh, random dots. Uh, you have the same controls. You've got the pattern scale. You have the gradient option and then you have the outline option. Um, the outline width on this one has to be a little bit higher. Uh, that's another thing I need to go through and kind of normalize all of these settings. For now, they you kind of they change a fair amount from one to the other. Okay, so there's random dots. We've got uh, squares. So bring that down. So just a perfect procedural square again with the aspect control. Uh, this has a gradient one. Gradient's not the best on this, but it is technically a gradient. Uh, you've got outline mode again, and you can see there. And then we have X's. Increase the pattern scale and the object scale. Oh, the outline width on this one controls the thickness of these and also the outline. These are kind of tied together and I need to change it, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. So um, yeah, so those kind of work in tandem. Um, and then the pluses act the same way. Uh, turn off that outline and now you've got a bunch of pluses. So hopefully you guys can find that uh, useful. And let me know if you have any questions. Probably coming up next, I plan on doing a proximal shader. Okay, see you guys later.